awesome. I, the, this is a part of doing this podcast, and I've done it for a while now, so like, there's always this part that the listener never gets to hear, which is us either figuring out how to set up the shit or just talking about very boring <laughs> topics. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, especially right now, I have so much shit I want to talk to you about because, first of all, we've known each other, I, I would say, safe to say, since like both of us started doing music ish. Yeah. Like since last year. And we've both seen each other like improve and like grow and all that stuff. But especially with you, I think you have the most interesting perspective when it comes to the Discord musician mm. or just the online musician in general. Mm. Because when I think of you, I the word professional is mainly what I'm thinking of because <laughs> You came into the Discord, and of course, like, you, you, you're a funny person, you do all that shit. You and RV have, like, this en- never-ending banter with each other. <laughs> yeah. But when I think of you, when I think of how you, like, handle yourself, how you speak of yourself when it comes to, like, doing calls or, like, group meetings, all that stuff, you have this professionalism about yourself. And... I'm going to guess that's because of your job. You don't have to go in too deep about it, but I'm going to guess it's because unlike a lot of people in the Discord right now, or just people online music, you are one, not a 14 year old child and you're not a student anymore. Yeah, that was what I was going to say, to be fair. I think it's it's a mix of like being on, on the older side, which, you know, I'm, I'm not old, I'm only 24, right? But in terms of Discord years, that's 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 up there yeah, for sure. Um, and then, yeah, my job definitely does help me. It's been like two years in the job I do. And a lot of it is really similar to all the kind of stuff I've been doing for the group projects and just making people get together and basically just making it as easy as possible for them to work together, which is really good for me because there's a lot of people way more talented than me. Um, but it, it, I, I still find it a good time just to bring everyone together. And, and make that stuff happen so yeah that, that's definitely why but yeah i try not to be like i try and you know be professional when you kind of need it to when you just need someone to be that person but like as you said and as as you know and everybody knows when it's <laughs> when that mode's turned off i'm trying to keep it very much as casual as anybody else um <laughs> yeah I, I don't know if anybody gets roasted more <laughs> in sub chat or in any circle <laughs> um but yeah we try and keep it moving either way and I think I think we should talk about how we met because I think we met each other at a very interesting time especially for myself because when I met you it was right when I started making like music seriously when I was like hungry as fuck and I was taking every beat and I was making a song to everything and I remember you sent me this this beat, it was you and Sarka, I think. I think so, right? And it, yeah. was, it was that, yeah, it was you, you Sarka. It was this random hip hop beat, and I was just rapping the worst shit on my life, <laughs> but I was so hype about it. And yeah. Like, <laughs> it's a good beat. But, that was a good beat. That's one of those beats I look back now <laughs> because it, uh, it's out on it's out on streaming. Because um, Connie used it as well, right? Mm-hmm. And put it out on streaming. You, I mean, you both got it on streaming. Mm-hmm. Um, but I listened to them both back, mm-hmm. and I'm like, um, yeah, I don't even know how I did this. <laughs> like if I was trying to, I didn't look back and think, how did I even, there's some like, um, there's some like 808 fills in there, or I'm like, why did I even try that? And why does it work? It's, it's such a strange, <laughs> such a strange beat. So yeah, it was very much when I was just getting started as well. And just, I guess I was just trying anything. <laughs> um, but yeah, mm-hmm. what, what was it like? Eight, must have been like April, May last year? Yeah. yeah. Almost yeah. a year ago. Well, yeah, about a year ago now. Fuck. Um, yeah you were the first person we made we made that yeah Yeah, yeah. yeah, i was was about to go ahead go ahead yeah yeah you were the first person that basically put vocals to a beat i did i'm pretty sure um which was crazy for me and then i remember getting vocals back and and like 
I think in the end, the final version, you just mixed it with just the chain and the beat as it was. Like, I don't yeah. think I even <laughs> properly mixed it. I just didn't know any of that side yet. Um, I still barely do, but back then, I just had uh, no idea what I was doing. Um, but yeah, it, it was super early on, which is crazy to think everything's happened in between. <laughs> it's been so crazy. I feel yeah. like we, we both been on <laughs> just like so different, just such different paths in the way. Um, so it's been cool. But to to me, it's it's. I talked to Nick about it during our episode. But it's basically the that moment when like you're 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 considering yourself new. You're not out here being like I'm a fucking god or anything. But you're so new that every new tip or trick or like this program or this plugin that just gets used to the max, and you're like. You're hinging on to like all these new ideas you have and you're like trying to make something out of it yeah yeah and i, I yeah I, it was it was cool in a sense because like you said we were just it was it was like back then if you found something new if you found like a new thing or a new like uh way of doing things it really felt like you leveled up whereas as you get further on i don't know how you feel mm-hmm. but for me now i feel like there's no like there's no like plug-in or there's no like you know like workflow thing or anything that is gonna like step up <laughs> like what i'm making um it's kind of like i'm the limit now which is kind of a weird thing it's, it's like the new yeah, games yeah. right at the start right um and now you've done it for a while yeah. i'm kind of like wow i don't even know where to go to step up from here but you know for me i it's a the whole music thing is like a it's like an escape it's like a hobby thing for me so i try not to get too much about it but i definitely feel that change over the last year i don't know if you feel the same with like just being a vocalist and an artist yeah because when, when i look back at my first stuff like there was a there was definitely a a prioritization of quantity over quality mm. and there was this like dude every day i was scared of everyone i was talking to just going like i don't care about this anymore i'm gonna drop it Mm. so i was putting out songs immediately like i would i wouldn't i wouldn't let a person have the chance to go like oh let's think about a rollout or anything i was like it's out it's out on spotify (laughs) done (laughs) yeah And, and because of that everything i learned was applied like immediately so yeah. you can hear like the first song sounds like this then the last song has like some crazy harmony and shit and then my first release is like some totally different shit so like it's basically like a timeline of like progress and when you're new that progress comes so quick yeah but this is why i think and people this is not like new knowledge it's not knowledge bomb but this is why i say to people just put just put stuff out like I'm, I'm bad at it as well. I barely have stuff in Spotify, which is why I'm trying to get these mixtapes out on SoundCloud and audio, whatever. Um, but just put stuff out because I feel like you might look back at the first stuff you put out, like back in SoundCloud right at the start and think, wow, like this was not it. Like the chain wasn't right or just the, 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 like, the lyrics were not there or like whatever compared to like something like 6.45 a.m., right? This is like, like this is... I feel like there's a, for me, I know it's a world of difference between that song coming out and the first stuff that came mm-hmm. out. And I don't, you tell me, but I have a feeling you don't look back and like regret the stuff you put out before. It's just, nah. It's just a journey, right? Nah. So, yeah, I, I think there's stuff like that. And this happened to me recently, actually, because um, Nick and I did shine on that crazy, like old school boom bat mm-hmm. that I made, um, which came out like end of last year sometime. Um, but we recently took it down off streaming um, because, mm-hmm. you know, we, it came to me and we had a conversation. It's like, look, this is, you know, I feel like this is not the same as like what I'm making now or like where we're at now. And I feel like we've done so much better since. And I'm like, yeah, like completely get it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not super precious about it. So, you know, but equally, I don't think, <laughs> I don't know if you ask Nick and I, if you ask me, I don't think anybody's going to regret the fact we put it out at the time. Like we could have spent an extra six months <laughs> tweaking it trying to get better yeah. before we were ready to drop it but i'm glad we just did it and, and put it out and especially when you're collaborating on a discord i feel like the longer you wait the, the, the thing just spirals like i've got 
you look at something like five two. Yes. I mean, how long were we working on five two for before it finally came out? So we're like way too long. Way, way too, too long. long. Like four months, five months maybe for a song that just came together in like two yeah. weeks, and then it just mixing, and then getting art, and then just pulling all the bits together was just it's just spiraled out of control. So I do feel there's something to be said yeah. for your approach of just songs done. It's coming out like. Especially at this stage, as is that when you're starting out. Cause, cause that was like, in the beginning, I was like, there was so much momentum behind me. Like, everything I was doing, I, I took so much pride in it, and I still take so much pride in it. But I was looking around and I was going like, dude, I'm putting out like, a song a week, two songs a week, and I'm looking around at people, and they're like yeah i don't know about the mixing shit and i was like you can ask different people i was yelling at people in, in dms to be like just fucking drop something mm. just do it just literally you are in the best position of your life right now to make music because you can take it back you can literally take it back yeah like not a you you have to be like you have to be like i don't know in 2002 and like selling cds before that situation can't happen but now it's like you just said it with shine like you can be like we did it we liked it now we don't take it back yeah but you don't grow as a musician right now in 2021 if you don't accept to just say fuck it put it out exactly and if you don't if if no one fucks with it sure okay that was a that was a swing and a miss mm. but you need to just go like it has to happen now we're not professionals so no. we don't have that professional mindset and workflow where we can like structure shit around a six month period. We're doing this in like hours. Like me and Luke yesterday in VC, we made a song in 12 minutes. Yeah. Well, you're doing it. You're doing it in the time you're not studying or working or whatever. Like you don't, you don't have the, the free time to put a project together over six months, plan out the release schedule. Like you, like it, you just, and you just, and you also don't need to. I feel like people that are mm -hmm. agonizing over their mix, it like does this mix out, like quite frankly, for where you are right now, and this is speaking to anybody that probably listens to this from our community, for where you are right now, the mix is not what's gonna make or break this song for you. It's it's the song itself, right? So, and and for me, the way to improve it, improve on the whole songwriting and, and producing side of thing is just put stuff out and get the feedback. Like if stuff's sitting on your hard drive, Mm -hmm. This is what I'm trying to get out right now. Stuff sitting on your hard drive, like cool. And um, there's something to be said for practicing and just, you know, being self-critical. But there's it's a whole other thing when you start putting your music out there. One, you get feedback externally. Two, you mm -hmm. get over the kind of pressure you have on yourself and like the anxiety you have about putting yourself out there. Um, the mix is not going to save mm -hmm. your song right now. Like, look at DVR. The the guy just it's such a corny example at this point, but it's super valid because even if you take out the fact that you know the music got to kenny and kenny you know did a lot of things for the for the kid but he would have been successful without that because the music is good the mix is trash but the music is good right and the point of that is there are other people who would have been in that situation agonizing over that stuff and like trying to make it work and then you know doing this for for time and time again instead of putting it out, whereas DVR did four songs we liked, put it out, it turns out it's four songs we all like, and, and then it goes from there. And so I just think it's a corny example because, yeah, we always point at DVR as, as like, you know, the, the person that's, that made it out, <laughs> made it out of the hood, right? But it's so valid. I think the lesson from it is so valid. Like, just just put the stuff yeah. out, just do it. Like, your, your mix, your hi-hat choice, whatever, the EQ you put on whatever, your freaking 808 chain, not actually going to save the song not at all just just do it like yeah. just get it out um which and is I have, just my I fault. have the i have the personal <laughs> like relation to that because my first song ever out was gucci girl mm -hmm. and i made that song in around like four minutes i re-recorded the vocals like the day after and then i just sat on it for like a minute because i thought it was going to go on the svs tape and then mm -hmm. after that i just put it out and that song is literally it is a it's a wave that I did the, the online audio converted thing to, mm. downloaded that to an MP3, put that in my session and recorded over it. And that's what it is. Yeah. All I did literally 
I just, I just, I just went through every ozone mastering preset until <laughs> one was like hitting, and that was it. Because no one's gonna songwriting know that. No one's today, gonna know that. yeah, no one's ever no dude. People have said the mix is good. And I'm like, sure, <laughs> it is because you're fucking with it, and that's about it. You can hear what I'm saying. You can hear the beat. That's all I care about. But yeah, right, right now, songwriting is the most important part for new musicians because to me the thing that makes or breaks a song is obviously like is the beat good like is everything in key and all that shit but is the vocalist actually the person i can like see singing or rapping this do you sound genuine do you sound honest those are the two things that like set you apart from the start hmm. yeah uh, i fully really get that and i guess i got a question in that why we're talking i was thinking about um i'm kind of torn in the mindset because you know me right i really enjoy getting like projects going and making like mm -hmm. slightly bigger things happen like bigger picture things like i enjoy making that happen whether it's yeah. a collab album with one other producer or whether it's you know 20 30 producers like we've done in the past right but then i don't know what do you think is it is it better to just because there's also a part of me that's like, we make a quick song. This is what happened with Five Two. We made a song. This is sick. Let's put it out. Like we're not going to save it for anything. Let's just let's just do it. Um, what do you think? If there is a best way, what is your opinion on, on like making songs, putting them out when they're ready, like or you know taking a bit more time and like focusing towards a project? What do you? I don't know what, what you think about that as an artist. I'm kind of torn on it. For me, right now, the way I'm looking at it is. And this is especially personal because you asked me. Um, no one is waiting for me to drop. Mm. No one is waiting for me to drop. Like, no matter how I look at my stats, my monthly listeners, my streams, all that shit, my followers, the people I know, no one is waiting for me to drop. Mm. So because of that, there is nothing, bet there is no difference between dropping 14 songs a week and one a month to me. All I care about right now is I'm thinking future wise. So I'm looking at every song I drop and I go, when I have 100,000, a million monthly listeners, all that stuff, will those st songs still have the same amount of value to those people? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the quality. That makes sense. That's fair. Yeah. That, that. I suppose it's, yeah, I suppose now you say it, it's, it's obvious. But, um, yeah, it's something I've been thinking about. But because I, like there, said, there, there, there is a, there's a valid point to what you're saying, and that is like, a lot of people, for some reason, this whole concept of like you need to have a rollout and all that stuff. Yes, you need to have a rollout, but a rollout is just like you need to plan out when you release something. You need to go like, hey, I, I'm gonna make sure all these people know and all that shit. You need to mm -hmm. market yourself. You need to brand yourself in a way that people can like. No, you need to let people know that you're dropping because no one is paying attention to you. Mm -hmm. So that's the rollout part. But when people are saying rollout, they mean like Chris Brown getting the Times Square billboard <laughs> thing and doing 50 interviews and all that shit. That's not us. Yeah. That is not us as the like new age musician, all that shit. Buy your Google ads, fuck it. But really what matters is that you establish yourself in smaller communities or establish yourself in KBD, for example that's when you start actually getting people who care about your shit because of the music and you not just because your friend was like hey this is my buddy he really likes it let's listen to it for two seconds mm. and that, that's what people say right when people talk about you need to like organically build your fan base around you like that's all it seems like that's always been true but i just think something like kbd or any server you're in is such a like a cheat code to that it's like it like you automatic if you think about if this would never happen this this uh, this kind of thought scares me so i can't even imagine how how <laughs> artists think about it um you think about yeah. um you think about if this would never happen and you start making music now and you drop a song like who is who who would be listening to that like that's not a dig at any artist but i like this is how i think about it like yeah. who would be listening to that like maybe people you know if you told them like maybe random people find it but realistically, like, 
you're, you're just shouting into the void. Like sixty thousand songs go on Spotify every day. Like it, it's just a, it's dropping the ocean. Like that shit's not gonna get found. And no matter what SEO you do, compared to what you have now, like this is the the raw you compared to what people have now, is crazy. Like if you think about Discord, even if you post mm-hmm. your link there, or even if you just hang around in subchat enough, you've got like a guaranteed, like. I don't know, 20, 30 listens on day one, which doesn't sound like much, but compared to you having no network and dropping it in the alternative world where you don't use Discord, that's crazy to me. Like, I just think, mm-hmm. and like, that that's like, that's the idea of, that's that's the example of you having like no networking and like not really putting too much time to Discord. But for people who are like spending a lot of time in there, their streams will get run up. Like, I, I just think having that platform is so, so valuable. And it, it blows my mind that people would be able to launch like music careers before without having this like community around them it feels crazy to me mm-hmm. um and so i feel like people should really make the most of this um and you know it's yeah. people are, you know you know it's real because people that do have deals know when their stuff is dropping and their labels tell them to be in discord around the time stuff is dropping which again not a dig that's just obvious and smart right and so <laughs> for, yeah. for anybody doing that isn't doing it on behalf of the label, if your stuff is dropping at a certain time or a music video is dropping at a certain time, then yeah, you should be you should be in those areas where your communities are and dropping it. And I think, yeah, I don't know. I don't know where the line between and, and obviously there's safeguards in various services to stop people exploiting those big communities. But when you start building organically, it goes beyond that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, like, for example, Fiamo in this competition this national campaign competition right now people can vote daily and it's like not mm-hmm. exploitative at all because that is a person no. that is in in the community like constantly mm-hmm. so when the link gets posted no one sees it as spam they're like oh thanks for the reminder it's time to vote for the amazon today like that's yeah. that's just how it goes and then i think mm-hmm. someone like Uya is a really good example of what your rollout should be at this stage um the single came out, multiple Insta posts, like they've been building their community through drum kits, whatever, um, always around the, the mm-hmm. Discord when they can, did the live show with us, very good. Like something like that is so, so achievable just to have like consistent, good quality, like social media posting, actually being in the community, mm-hmm. um, dropping a single and then, yeah, reaching out to blogs and stuff. And I think those for me are two really good examples that I've noticed that yeah. I've just managed to take advantage of this like organic community. Yeah. And especially an artist like Uya, because a lot of those things you just talked about that Uya did, I helped him with that because the thing is like I came into this Discord community not knowing shit about releases and rollouts besides what big people are doing. So like, you know, when like this artist is dropping, you see like fifty interviews and like they do all this different shit. But the thing I was noticing was you need to start treating yourself if you're an online musician like an online content creator. You need to do the same moves and look at your community and your posts and your stories and your channels like you're a YouTuber or a Twitch person. Yeah. And that's where you're actually going to have that benefit over the professional musician. When you start seeing yourself in the like modern day artist perspective that i see i sh- my perspective is generally every musician should look at your music as a youtube video mm. you should look at it as a youtube video you should look at it as a stream announcement all that shit because we can make so much of it and every single one of those songs can be your blow up moment yeah and because of that like when you release insta story all that shit and especially with Uya, like, we work through hella ideas to what he should do for the album drop. And each step of the way, it was like, you do understand, like, you can do this for free. And you do understand you have the KBD. Mm-hmm. Like, I had to remind him constantly, he's like, because I, I think people, because we're all friends, that's that's the part of KBD that... But also, like, the thing outside people might not get is, like, we're all friends. Like, Coles, I would be talking to you even if we hadn't done everything together. Yeah, yeah. Like, and because of that, you're in a position where, like, you can ask your friends to help you with shit. 
So I was like, ask people to spam the song or spam this blog, all that shit. For sure. So it's like, when you're a modern musician, you need to look at yourself as all the other content creators because those people have set the like, have set the standard and have done the layout and the like, the blueprint for how you should behave, how you should act, and how you should promo yourself. Yeah, and I, I think just listening to everything we both just said, I do feel like part of it is, you know, this is the same old like rhetoric. Like everybody knows, like everybody's heard this by now, right? That you need to, you know, the modern day musician, if you're doing it alone, needs to be like a content creator. Like I feel like I feel like that's been like well, sort of <laughs> documented and spoken about. I do think one thing that's like my kind of interest like take on this not in, maybe not interested but my take on this is also like do what's do what's achievable for you because true true i so, think i think this ties into like a lot of where people get paralyzed by stuff because you might make it say you make a song you love it you think it could be your blow up moment as every song could be like you said um there's also like this fear of like how to roll it out and like how much content you make for it and it's like is it even worth it if it even worth me dropping this song if I don't have like a big Insta campaign or whatever and I think that scares a lot of people and it kind of gives them this like paralyzing anxiety um and this is where I think it comes back to what we're talking about right at the start where it's like just like there's still benefit in just dropping stuff because like you said even if your only rollout is just mentioning it em- enough times in KBD if that's right for you at this stage then then yeah that's right for you and then as you move forward when you get more comfortable with making the music part then you can maybe start venturing out into into like you know the bigger bigger marketing stuff and then like you said ask your friends like i think one thing that isn't done too much as far as i know and it's maybe something that could be done is like consolidating this knowledge of marketing so you know nick made it onto new music friday in singapore which is insane it's crazy and then i know people like bad type who have their marketing game up and uh similar to me in that they have like this kind of professional background and they're good at like understanding and dealing with that stuff and i think i feel like we could do more to consolidate that knowledge to help people um just help people when it comes to release time like know just how to submit to you know submit hub or whatever or how to reach out to blogs or just what is the most time efficient way to do things and what's the best value and, and stuff like that um yeah, yeah, something I'm thinking about. I, my knowledge bit is not super, super strong either, which is why when people talk about <laughs> me managing them, I'm like, well, I need to like step my knowledge up on that stuff before <laughs> I can be really helpful. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's interesting. Uh, There's that whole sure. business side of stuff, which we don't talk about too much. Yeah. And it feels kind of hacky at the moment. Like uh-huh. A lot of it is like, oh, I heard this is the best way to get notes and sub- submit hub. And I just it's feel hearsay. like- it's, it's so much hearsay. Yeah, exactly, right? And yeah, it does work and it doesn't work. I just feel like, yeah, that is one thing we're missing, which is- And the, the, thing, the thing I'm seeing is like, a lot of people really want that playbook where it's like, step one, step two, step three. And there are, like, you if you search up digital marketing mm-hmm. guide, like, you'll find, like, a little, like, step-by-step guide post these to do this to the algorithm and all that shit yeah but most of the time that's gonna be momentary that's gonna be like okay now you have a thousand monthly listeners and next month you have four yeah so when we all say we want that organic growth and all that shit we're (laughs) we're basically saying we want to suck and have a really bad time for a while just so one day hopefully pretty soon because everyone wants to blow up immediately <laughs> we can have a fan base that we can actually call a fan base yeah because that's what a lot of us are struggling with it's going i need other people than my friends and my immediate circle to care about me mm-hmm. so when that starts being your main motive you start looking at submit hub and all these different places and you start going well this is what everyone else is doing yeah i should do it too yeah and you know what i think it comes back to um comes back to what we're saying right at the start which is that we talked about how all of this like all of this pressure to do like good marketing and get picked up by the algorithm now is so there's so much pressure on it that it becomes paralyzing and i think the message we said right at the start was just put stuff out 
Um, and it comes back to having fun doing it. Like, I feel like you should be making music and putting out a song because it was fun to do and you want other people to hear it. If it's good, Sorry. it'll get picked up by the algorithm. I feel like everything else, like we said, in the same way your mix isn't going to determine really whether your song blows up. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah. So uh, it's In the same way the mix doesn't determine that, the way you submit to Subhub is also not going to determine that yeah. as much either. Obviously it helps, but it's like a secondary thing. I feel like the main focus is having fun and actually doing it. Um, yeah. I mean, the when I explain to people the way I made Gucci Girl, like, quote-unquote, blow up, like, relative to blow up song for me, it's my most streamed song. Yeah, yeah, like, that's fair. I did, I did none of the... <laughs> I did none of the whole like, well, I started by finding my target audience and uh, Google ads and all that shit. No, yeah. I made that song into a meme by making it annoyingly obvious that I wanted to blow up. And yeah. it was the start of every stream I did and it was the ending of every stream I did. And I literally through just through KBD, I just made everyone be like in on the joke that then inadvertently became like everyone know- now knows about that song. Yeah. So it's there there are different ways of you blowing up or having moderate intermediate success with what you do. And you need to start not looking at yourself purely as professional musician X. No, if you look at yourself in that content creator perspective, you can see like, well, <laughs> most of the YouTubers I watch, they don't make ads for their videos. They just hope either one becomes like a joke meme thing and then they carry over mm. or they just post consistently consistent quality and then our fan base fan base will like form around that yeah exactly and i feel like if you the concept if you're putting out like one song every six months because you're trying to chase perfection it's obviously going to be harder to build a fan base versus if you're talking about the new song you released every three months or every month mm-hmm. like it just yeah. gives you something to to build, yeah, build that community around as well, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like we do a lot of <laughs> a lot of blow up industry marketing talk. Um, but what's um, what's what's next for you? What are the plans, music wise or like life wise? So I had the unfortunate three months of me having to have <laughs> quote unquote a regular life. Yeah, have a job, uh, which I found is a. I, I'm, I'm gonna just bow down to everyone who has a nine to five situation and <laughs> still make great music because mm. I couldn't do that shit. So the first first like three four months of <laughs> this year, I was just not doing shit. Yeah, but now stuck up. That's Kojo Leo Felix. That's coming out soon. Yes, and from there it's just gonna be like i have a bunch of songs coming out so i'm gonna start doing a song a month and then i have some collabs coming out at the same time but for me how i'm looking at myself right now is that hopefully with that momentum and that energy some of those songs bring and the stuff that i'm doing on twitch and what i'm doing right now the podcast i will start to like accumulate a group of people who actually like Oh, this is a perspective. This is insight to a world I didn't know existed. Because that's what I hope, like, everything I do is. It's this insight to what hopefully, or what's probably, like, in a couple of years going to be, like, our version of Kanye to the, or, like, all these different forums. Yeah. Because it's this insight into a world that most people could not imagine existed. And that I'm so glad we have documented. Yeah. And that I've documented because, like, all those radio show episodes I used to do are out. You can hear people from the start talk about how the Discord is. Yeah. So I'm basically going to hopefully build on that. And then at the end, this, uh, it's not disassociate, but set myself aside from that and actually be like, hey, I'm actually a person that does shit and that hopefully you will be interested in. No, because what I want to do the most right now is have an audience on the regular. And building that to me, even even with all that I know, I still know the work that takes. Like I've told people to do different things when it comes to like marketing themselves, but I know how difficult it is. That's why I'm not doing it. Cause I'm like, I, I'm not at the mental capability, capability <laughs> where I can do that shit. Yeah. But yeah, it's just 
basically trying to be the brand more than yeah. the person. That's sort of my goal right now. Makes sense. How did you just flip the, this interview on me? What the? Hold on. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> hey, hey. What the people no, I'm want. Kidding. It's what the people want. It's what the people. It's what the people want. No, I remember one time Lauren interviewed me. She was like, "Let me interview you," and then it went off of three hours. And at the end, I was just like, "Okay," because <laughs> I had to edit that shit. I've never edited it. <laughs> like, oh man, yeah, I did a. I didn't send the one with Luke recently, which may or may not drop oh at some point in the future, where we just talked yeah. shit about music and inspiration and how we started and, and all that shit. We talked about the festival. It was interesting. So we had a conversation that was recorded about the festival before the festival happened. Um, uh-huh. Do you want to talk about that real quick? The, the whole festival situation, how that came up? Yeah, yeah, I can do. I feel it's something I'm very proud of. I need to get the um, I mean to do it. I haven't done it. I need to get the, the poster printed out for myself and on my wall because I'm super proud of it. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know how people look back at it now. For me, I, I look back at it super fondly. I'm super proud we did it. I don't know if like in terms of the community, if anybody thinks back to that event as like a big, you know, keystone event that happened in the same way that SVS or something is. But for me, it was. Um, the way it came about was, it was just as as these things always do, the same way the Christmas album started. Um, <laughs> it was just people just talking shit in sub chat. So me, you, Luke mentioning live shows and why we haven't done like a live stream festival. Started off doing that and we started off having that conversation and we really did start from nothing, right? Which was, we didn't even know how we were going to do it. We didn't know what software we'd need. Yeah. We didn't know who was going to do it. But we kind of just... <laughs> One thing I respect about working with you on that stuff and, and Luke also was that we kind of just got the ball rolling straight away. We just were like, these are the artists we're going to reach out to. Um, let's see if they're interested and we'll work about the, work out the tech side on, mm-hmm. on, the, on one side as well. So yeah, just, just doing it. And worst case scenario, we just say, oh, it's not going to work. We can't do it. But we just started doing it. And then, because, like you mentioned, there was like various life situations and like shit comes out. So then the kind of team structure changed to where there was a period where Timber and I were, we were leading it, um, which was super helpful because Timber's got the insane technical knowledge, which once we started reaching out to artists and, and having these conversations with them and getting, making sure they were set up to stream, I realized how out of my depth I was. Um, mm. And one of the things for me is that when it, whether it's producing all these projects um, or whatever, I'm never afraid to, to reach out to somebody else to help me do stuff because people can do stuff way better than me, streaming, producing, like whatever. I'm never afraid to get somebody else to 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 do something like not for me but with me and help me do it. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> Tim, oh oh my oh me. my god! I just realized you're the DJ Khaled of Discord. Literally, <laughs> for real. This is what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm I'm so like not good at doing loads of things, but I will know who is good. And I probably will have a good enough relationship with them that they'll help us out. That's like my, whether it's like my normal job or whether it's Discord stuff, this is how I view myself. Like, I would mm-hmm. not know how to do basically anything you want from me, but I will literally know who will and I will be able to make them do it or get them to mm-hmm. do it. <laughs> not make them yeah. do it, but I'll be able to get them to get, call in the favor, basically. Um, I find that at work and I find that here, which I, I kind of like. So it's some quality I like about myself to be able to pull in the right people. But yeah, pulled in Timber, which was a blessing and from there it was just kind of it just kind of happened and we just were all the artists were super engaged um everybody was like super willing to do it and and shout out to those guys who gave us a lot of their time spent a lot of time practicing for some of them it was their first time like performing live in that way for some of them it was their first time doing their original music live which was crazy which must have been an amazing (laughs) feeling um worked all that out and then was talking to Alicia about it and one thing I'll say and uh, I don't know if I've spoken about this publicly but I'm like super happy to and <laughs> edit it out if we feel it's inappropriate but um was speaking to Alicia about it and one thing I always thought about was the diversity of the lineup which the original lineup didn't have the original lineup in terms of the artists and the team surrounding it is what I mean here wasn't the, as diverse as it could be considering everyone we know in discord and i put that on myself a lot because i think i was kind of so caught up in the mechanics of making it work that i didn't give that side of things as much thought as i could have um 
luckily, we have a really good network around us and we have strong enough relationships that people can call out on stuff and uh, and that's fine then we just we move forward and, and we fix the issue um mm-hmm. so speaking to alicia just casually because alicia is a, is a good friend about the lineup and one of the first things she said is why they're not more women involved and immediately it, it hit me like this was so obvious um <laughs> it was just so obvious to me that we yeah that, that we were wrong here um mm-hmm. And I, it wasn't like I, it wasn't like a conflict there. It was, it was a friend of mine from a different community or a different part of the community putting their immediate thought back, and me seeing that and acting upon it. And and for the, the final product was way better for it. And I, I was really grateful that we would manage to address that issue without any conflicts or any like mm-hmm. drama, or like internet drama kind of thing. It was a very mature yeah. thing, and I was I was super super grateful that we got called out on that. Um, if, so, if yeah. I can interject for a minute, yeah, I, sure. I feel like this ties really great into what we talked about in the beginning with the whole like being new to everything. So every input can be like done immediately. Yeah. Because I I would have thought like imagine the like the bureaucratic process if this was like a huge event with like mainline sponsors and everything like this would have taken a while mm. people would have had like differing opinions but because you first of all put yourself in the position of <laughs> discord dj Khaled and said <laughs> if other people know better then i will implement i will implement that yeah exactly um exactly and so yeah immediately it was so funny it was so close to when we were thinking of like finalizing things and i was like you know it was uh, it was preying on my mind a little bit and then when i got called out for it i was like i should have i should have done something sooner so immediately i was like we're, we're changing things like sw- we added we added an extra host um and like can you imagine that show without alicia i can't i, I honestly can't i can't like it was like i and even behind the scenes like all the input alicia put in like amazing amazing and then switched up the lineup a little bit um our twitch mods we made sure we had the right representation there um yeah and i'm just i'm really glad that 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 moment happened because this that whole festival we did a lot of good like a lot of people gained new fans a lot of people had a great experience we raised a lot of money for charity um and i'm so glad that we were able to fix issues like that and so they were they they were less of an issue than they could have been right i don't know if that makes Mm -hmm. sense but it could have been like a cool event with like but you know it wasn't quite representative stuff like that and i feel like yeah. we managed to address that quickly enough and in a way that felt natural i don't feel like i i don't feel we handed out any free passes there like we just yeah. we improved it beyond what it already was um there was yeah. no kind of like <laughs> there was no kind of like quota or like oh i'm gonna have to do this because somebody's pointed it out like it 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 was a hundred percent an improvement and I'm, I'm super super grateful for it so yeah. yeah it went off really well and all we had was some technical glitches whatever it happens <laughs> um but raised a bunch of money and I'm, yeah it was for me it's the most um, ambitious thing we've done i don't know if everybody would agree but for all the projects i've been a part of I, this was the most ambitious for me um, to me i will still like i'll forever see that as peak community effort yeah. Even though there, even though this that might have been like the project where there has been the least amount of people involved, mm. like in terms of like the Christmas EP or the KBD projects, like even though, but th- but obviously this came based on experience from that, for on your part, like experience from yeah. working with people, reaching out, stuff like that. I'll always see that festival as like this is probably one of the most impressive things, a group of people with no incentive other than wanting to do shit have yeah. ever like done in the discord yeah 100 percent. And, and we really got to pull together some of our favorite people and and it, it was interesting because i think going forward if we do stuff we need to think about how we make it bigger because this time was really just really just selecting like our favorite people to work with and and who we, who we know the community liked it and and putting them yeah. putting them together which i i really liked because it felt like the lineup we had was very organic to the discord like i feel like if we'd had voting on who to perform the lineup would have been pretty much the same anyway right like Mm -hmm. there was 
We yeah. managed to really managed to get the greats that we love, that we're able to do. And I'm, I'm proud we managed to get the lineup we did. Um, and the big thing for me is that after the anniversary album, originally it was going to be more tied to KVG than it was. Um, mm-hmm. But after the anniversary album, we felt, not we, well, I felt, we should spin it out and have our own branding. Um, yeah. And then Tim, Timber came up with the name The Listening Party, like off off, the, <laughs> off top, like off the dome. It was an amazing idea. I personally love the name. I think it's perfect. Um, and so yeah, Timber just spat it out off the dome and it was changed. And I felt like we really, although we obviously, you know, yes to jobs, we all know through KBD. Um, mm-hmm. We had Eris and Dom do the closing DJ set, like that was super helpful, and, and it was great to have that kind of like extra star power behind us. Like that was great, and they did a great job. But I felt like now, and well, from that event, to be honest, it was we really did spin out into our own thing. Um, like it wasn't apart from the fact we all know each other from from that one server. It wasn't ostensibly like a Discord or a KBD thing. It was just the Discord community, and I think going forward we'll be able to like make use of that being its own thing. And we'll be able to reach out to people from other servers and, and just grow that kind of network. It starts with the most recent SVS where we had about, we had people that we kind of, you know, call KBD members across like five, six, seven teams in SVS. Um, and that's kind of the vibe I want to get to with future listening party stuff and yeah. just expand that network. But yeah, that's why I'm really proud of it is that we managed to stand that up on our own. It feels like a, it feels like its own thing. I hope people are looking forward to more of that stuff. There's, there's more Definitely. coming. But yeah, super proud of I that. Fe- I feel like the last the last thing I want to talk to you about is are the project albums. Because yeah. besides the, the whole festival, I still feel the project albums are the, like, the moments where I literally went like, I have never felt more respect for a person. And like just pure like why would you put yourself through that (laughs) (laughs) then when you like put your foot forward and you're like yeah i'm doing this and we're doing these things and we're scheduling xyz Mm. because i think the output of those projects um christmas album anniversary tape and i feel like the output of those projects still weigh in the community like those songs some of those people have put out those songs and i for a fact know because i had the soundcloud at the time when we put out the christmas album and people were hitting the soundcloud dms thinking first of all it was kenny uh, (laughs) second of all just being like how can i be involved in the next one yeah every stream like when kenny would play it he would be like people in chat would be like how can i be involved how can i be involved how does it feel to you to have like built up this like process or this foundation that so many people desperately want to be a part of yeah i mean yeah I, it's interesting to say like that i feel like you you <laughs> you paint it on like a higher pedestal than i see it as myself but um and that's maybe because i'm too close to it but yeah it is it is interesting and i do see a lot of people saying how am i part of the next one and i i've I don't know when the next one is um, that I'm running. And the point is that these community albums don't need to be run by me. Um, I'm always on hand to help. Um, there's a summer project going on, which is lifting up. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm trying to remember the, <laughs> the exact acronym they, they've gone for, but I think it's Women, Trans and Non-Binary is the acronym of the server. Um, mm-hmm. There's that project going on and that was very much um, uh, well, I, you know, I'm not trying, I'm, I won't speak to that, but there's projects like that going on. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I really like, for me, I like that it, 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 it's not people asking, how do I be part of that? It's, I really like that people are seeing that it can happen um, because we just decided to, <laughs> if that makes sense. Like the Christmas mm-hmm. one, we were just talking in chat in November um, and then Neo and I set up that server and started saying who's interested come and bo- come and get involved and we just started making music and then i remember we started with ty and, and less with the anniversary one that all started because ty johnson messaged me saying hey we want to do one for the anniversary um we heard you're the person to speak to can we sort it out and i was like yeah of course we'll, we'll do it and 
we said to everybody um, who was involved or who wants to be involved at the time, like, there's no theme here. We're just making music. We can just do it. Um, and I, I feel like we did step up with the anniversary album in terms of where we organized it and the way we included people. Um, mm-hmm. And we just, I feel like we just knew what we were doing more because we knew what the timelines were like. Everything felt a bit more structured, um, yeah. which was great. Um, but yeah, so in answer to your original question, how does it feel? I guess I'm glad people want to be involved. Um, I hope people know the commitment it takes <laughs> to do it. Usually when we start these projects, a core group kind of forms who are most involved. And that's not to say to people who care more than others or are better than others. Life gets in the way and there's so many other factors that <laughs> determine how much you put, how much of your free time you put into a, a unpaid project in the, in the community, right? Um, but yeah, it's a lot of commitment from everybody. Um, but it is worth it. I hope people see that it is worth it, even if it's just, if it's just to meet new people. Like, look at Bad Type and Ali now. One album out, another album on the way, working with Brass Tracks. <laughs> like, that started because of the Christmas album. Um, mm-hmm. There's people like Sidarius, who is now doing a tape with Bad Type and, and ATK, met through the anniversary album. Um, there's just so many collabs like that that happen, and it's like a... It's like a, it's so similar to SVS, but my ethos for that server where the projects happen and if I'm doing any more projects in the future, which I don't know if I am yet, but if I do, my thing is very much to keep it super relaxed like that. Anybody who's been a part of it can tell you that there's no real rules. You just just make stuff. Um, the only real rule is don't clog up the channels with bullshit, like make it so people can <laughs> find your music. Um, yeah. And then we worry about it from there. Um, and yeah. That was a really rambly answer to your question, but there's like a lot of no, things. But... I think about like <laughs> a lot of things happen in those in those projects, but and I'm I'm glad that people see it as a positive um, rather than I don't know rather than the alternative, I guess. Yeah. And the reason the reason I ask like that, it's because through like a lot of interviews I've done through a lot of just like combos and all that sh- stuff in with people I know. I've always brought up this concept that to me right now, the way I see it online collabing is just collabing now. Yeah. Like that is the definitive standard for a lot of people. Yeah. So seeing people like yourself, people like Nia, like Ty, take these decisions to go like, we're now going to do online collaboration on a quote unquote professional level where it's structured there is a hierarchy in terms of who can like get help all that stuff and all that shit so when i'm thinking of the christmas album or the anniversary album what i'm seeing is basically a group of people saying we know that you're gonna label this as online collaboration in a discord but this is no different from a writing camp this is no different from a label being like let's put these people together in a room like that is the definitive standard for me when it comes to group projects yeah and seeing how y'all have been like first of all like so open and inclusive with it and then also being like for example like fam i i straight up i stole the the google sheets you made for the for (laughs) um the project and i used it in the mahira discord yeah stuff like that is spreading and that's that's why in the beginning i was like you are the way i see you you are the professional because <laughs> you bring in and you can say what you want about that i'm still labeling you as that um but you still brought in those <laughs> those workflows and those like small nuances to it to where it became more of being a part of a project that people took serious because i want as many people as like possible to start taking discord musicians serious and not mm. just label it as online people or XYZ. Now we're at the level where labels are wondering how the fuck we did it and how the fuck we can just get 50 people together and make a project and then mm. put it out ourselves and do art ourselves and mixing and mastering. We're not asking y'all for help. Y'all are asking us. Like that is the level of commitment we have now to collabing together and making communities together. Like yeah. in the end, it's gonna be us who decides what music is going to come out 
Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think... I mean, yeah, I appreciate what you're saying about <laughs> saying about me being a professional, and I think, you know, it is, it is what I want to do. Like, I really do want to help. Like I said, I know I'm not... You know, the music thing is, is like a fun hobby for me, but I know I can help people pull themselves together and, and make this stuff happen. And I say, when I have artists that I, I work with or I really respect, that, or that, that, I, that I just <laughs> enjoy... And I speak to them about the projects they're doing. Like I'm always saying, you know, if you want to just worry about the music and you want someone to just handle the admin shit and just like keep track of stuff and all of that, like, let me know. Like I'm <laughs> so down to do it for the, if it, if it works, if it's the right person, if it works for both of us, like I'm, I'm so down to do it. Um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see about the management side of things. Maybe one day, <laughs> mm-hmm. maybe at some point I'll have to just pull the trigger and be like, look, we're going to do this and it's going to suck for a while, but (laughs) at least you'll have someone on your team. Um, But yeah, for me, I I really enjoy that. I think that's probably, I'm just rambling about myself now, but I think that's kind of where I'm looking at next is I don't know if I'll do another big community project for a little while Um, because it was tiring. I did the community as soon as the, I mean, at one point I was doing the festival and the community album at the same time and I would finish my day job and then have more project calls for those projects in the evening. Um, yeah. Which is fine, I love doing it, don't get me wrong. But yeah, I think for me, I'm looking at doing some smaller projects. If there's like three artists I know that are working together or whatever, or like a couple of producers that just want to, want to not worry about the bullshit or like where stems are or like what's mixed and what isn't, all of that shit. Um, yeah, I think I'd be down to help people in that way. Ending statements, basically, the thing I was thinking of. <laughs> Are you proud of what you've done so far? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Um, The last year is like, in so many ways, (laughs) in so many ways in the last year, um, I have, you know, found a new hobby (laughs) that I really love. Um, I've met a bunch of new people I really love. I feel like I've grown as a person, which is great, just from just from being exposed to a, a diverse group of people that I would never have met otherwise. Um, and I found out like what I'm trying to do in life, <laughs> in general, um, outside of like Discord stuff. I found what I'm trying to do in life, which is similar to what I'm doing here. Um, and I've got like three projects that I can say that I, you know, pretty much led or helped lead, and I'm super proud of. So yeah, I think I am definitely proud of everything that's happened <laughs> since since meeting you, since joining Discord, all of that stuff in the Facts. last year. Facts. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for coming on, fam. <laughs> no worries. No worries, mate.